Welcome back to our channel, folks. My name is Brad. I'm Deb. And if you're new to our channel, this isn't a welcome back, but this is a welcome. And what we're all about here at Piney Grove is 20 acres in North Florida that we're turning into our future homestead. We're four years into this. We got three years left before we move onto the property permanently. And we're setting up all the infrastructure on this property to make that move three years from now as seamless as possible. But what this video is, and for those of you that have been watching, this is the hopefully final video on the fence. Although I don't, there, there may be a video 10. So this is video nine of the nine part, potentially 10 part series of us putting up 750 feet of fence on our west fence line. We came through here with chainsaws, we came through here with brush hogs, excavators, cleaned this up, took a couple days to put in the post, a couple days to string the wire and stretch it, and it's been sitting like that for a couple months, and we're just now getting into putting in the T-post. But what we're gonna do for you today, we're gonna use three different methods to put in T-post. We have the manual T-post driver, where you slam an iron pipe down on it, and she is, as yep. you can see, very petite. And uh, I'm not excited I, about that one. And I am worn out from being old. So we're not gonna put in a bunch of posts with that. We may just use that to start the post. Yeah, we, we're probably not even gonna put in one. And then secondly, we have an iron pipe that we're gonna put over top of the T post and see if we can push it down with the tractor bucket. Uh, you can do that with a tractor or an excavator, but uh, we have the L3901 Kubota out today. We're gonna try that because that's a really good method unless you hit a stump or a root. So there's that. But then lastly, we have a tool that we're very excited about. It's gonna be the unboxing of the tool here in a minute. And it's something I've wanted for a while and something this farm has needed and uh, I got one. So we're going to turn this camera around and we're gonna unbox it and we're gonna show you what we got. Okay, folks, what I have here is my luggage. I wanna show you what I wear when I do fencing. That is not true at all. What I have here is the box, and this box was provided by the manufacturer of the tool I'm about to show you. And Deb wants to show you something else real oh, quick. We got a visitor. <laughs> Hi, beauty. Oh my goodness. I need to go, I need to go scratch her nose. Okay, so Deb wants to play with the horses and not do fencing, and I don't blame her. But getting back to the matter at hand, I have always wanted one of these. And what we have here is a two stroke or a two cycle post hole, not a post hole, a T post driver. So you have your motor assembly here, and then you have two different collars. And one of the collars is for T post and one's for iron post. It has a hammer. So you screw this on to these threads right here and you put that hammer on and you hammer down T-post. Now I've always wanted one of these and we bought that iron pipe and you know it's 2022, inflation is real and that pipe cost us $10 a foot. I paid $50 for that pipe and that's how we were gonna do all of these T-post. But a few weeks ago, I decided to do a Google search just to see how much these are. And there's pneumatic ones where you would need an air compressor and a way to run your air compressor plus the machine and they were five to uh, 500 to $1,000. Well, this particular one was at Home Depot, and the day that I checked Home Depot, it was $200 off. So I think it was like a $500 machine, and it was $200 off, so I jumped on it. We have a lot of fencing to do here at Piney Grove. We're gonna do a lot of cross fencing, and most of that is gonna be T-post. I think, I, I think I'm gonna enjoy this. I think it's actually gonna be fun to put in T-post. But uh, that's what we have for you. We have not started it or anything. So I'm gonna put it together and crank it up. It says for the first six hours, you can only run it at 60% of its throttle. So we can't rev it up all the way, but I'm sure it'll do a good job in the soil. So uh, let me get some fuel in it and then we'll get started. Oh, it's got an on off switch. <laughs> Okay, folks, what we got here is Deb and I put these wooden posts, they're eight inch wooden posts, about 30 feet apart. But they vary because we some of them are 32 feet apart, 28 feet apart. It just depended on where the stumps and the roots of the trees in this fence line were. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the total distance. And true to form, I didn't bring my long uh, tape, my 300 foot tape, so I only have this 20, 25 foot tape measure. So we're gonna have to figure out how wide this bay is, divide it by three, and that'll be how far away from the center of that post we'll put the first T-post. We're gonna put 
two T-posts per bay and work our way down. And then we have the little wire clips and also have a neat little tool we'll show you. Alrighty, so as discussed, the first method we're gonna put in is via the manual smash in the ground method that Bradford's going to demonstrate right now. And we'll use the pipe and then we'll use the handy dandy new tool. But first, it's old school. Show us what you got, Bradford. I'm glad he has hearing protection on. You gotta hold the fence away or else the post hole driver will hit the fence. And what this allows us to do is they make insulators that go on top of a T-post and we can put an insulator on top and then an insulator on the wooden post if we wanted to run a strand of barbed wire or electrical wire across the top here. Yeah, I'm gonna set the post with the manual one and then I'm going to try that other one, try the powered one. I feared that. I figured it was going to be too high. Actually, I have to be in the tractor bucket or some sort of stool. I don't know how long it'll last, but uh, for now, I love it. Bradford, what do you think of your new toy? That thing is amazing. The, the amount of shoulder stress and just back fatigue and all that, that this is gonna save us here on Piney Grove. I don't have any longevity data on this. We've used it for two or three posts, but right now I'm sold on this. The heck with that, uh, that manual one. That thing just set in a post, my shoulders already hurt a little bit. Now that I see how fast that I can do that, rather than you know doing them one at a time and measure them, what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure all the bays and mark them with a, with a permanent marker. That's what Deb's been doing on the wire. And then we're gonna put the posts where they are and just tap them in with the manual one just to hold the post up. And then we'll bring the bench and the two cycle T-post driver and we'll just go boom, 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 right down the line. There's a good chance, like we said in the beginning of the video, we might finish in a day. There's a good chance we'll get all these T-posts in today with that machine. All right, quick update. We went down the entire fence line. They're anywhere from 27, 28 feet apart to like 31-ish. Our average was supposed to be around 30, so we just had to adjust for the trees that were in the way, but we've got the fence marked where every T-post goes. We've got some of the T-posts laid out. We're reusing a lot of T-posts that we've pulled up from around the property. I bought 15 new ones, so we're putting the new ones right here in this stretch where we're gonna see the fence the most because we want to see the nice green new uh, T-post. But well, we're going to lay out the rest of these new ones and then go to a pile where we have some rusty old ones that we're going to recycle or repurpose. I guess we're not repurposing them. We're recycling them and uh, lay them all out and then just go down the line and put them in. We got to say, Deb. I got to say that your fence driver, your fence post driver is pretty cool. Loud, but very, very cool and I'm excited to see how many we can actually get driven in. We could probably drive them all in today and just not clip them. So that's right. what I'm thinking. You, you gonna drive some post in with the driver? I, 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 will give it a, I will give it a shot. All right, stay tuned. Showed up, old Bella. Okay, we put out all that we had. We need two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, probably about thirteen, thirteen or fourteen more. We're gonna do some clips today. I'm going to go ahead and put the T-post in, but Deb's going to do most of the clips, or she's going to do some of the clips before we have to go. 
when we were stretching this wire we didn't get it stretched perfectly so these verticals are not perfectly straight up and down nor is the post perfectly in but what we'll do is we'll hold the post over on the top and that'll keep it mostly in the center bay five clips per post is the right amount but this little tool just fits right in that little cavity right there like that but that's the way it works now that's starting to hold that up straight but you can see the more room you leave on the square the easier it is to get the tool in the tool and then twist and it's in there there you go one two there's four we didn't do five on this one but I mean that's all it needs and that's how you put clips in with the little I'm sure Deb will call it the clippy tool okay folks this is Mrs. Piney Grove's first time ever putting a clip in with the clippy tool So I think she over rotated it. It doesn't matter. It'll hold it on. Okay, folks. This is attempt number two for Mrs. Piney Grove. Like that. There you go. And then that's that. That's that. I just set the post with the manual driver a couple inches. Then I put a piece of pipe I talked about over it. And the pipe keeps the T post from bending. And now I'll take the weight of the tractor bucket and just push it down. Now Deb's going to keep it straight, so she's going to be under the tractor bucket. But uh, I'll be careful with her there. So she did exactly what she was supposed to do. She's supposed to stay lower. That worked beautifully and I heard that it does. Now this is soft soil, that's why I tried it here. But you see, you just just the weight of the bucket and, and the only reason it slipped is because the ground's a little bit uneven here and, it, and it's, it's uh, I wasn't perfectly squared up. But that's a pretty slick way to do it. It's the tractor's quieter than the two cycle pounder. And um, the only problem would be, you know, you saw Deb was under there holding it straight you'd want to make sure the tractor was perfectly level so that um, there's no slippage but there was no way it was ever going to hit her because i didn't have i didn't have the bucket jammed all the way down but anyway that's how you do it with a pipe let's see how easy it is to pull this pipe off the post yeah, i mean yeah that's that's, that's quick. pretty slick uh, let's talk about that experience i wasn't even concerned at all until i heard the loud kachunk and uh then I was slightly concerned for only a second. But it went slicker and quicker with the tractor. But again, that's not factoring in the tractor move time. So put them in a little too deep. So now the old handy dandy fence post puller comes in uh, handy. Okay, I got my four posts in, but you can see that we got a nickel holding up a dollar here. I said, this one doesn't have as much space, so I have to do it differently than I've been doing it. And for whatever reason, this little easy breezy tool makes me, th makes me think about what I'm doing, but there you go. So look at, look at me improvising. There's Bella running to come see us, Bella and Lily. Oh, I put that one way too close. No, I sat here I sat here talking and I wasn't paying attention. I was going to just keep going up the line. She's so excited about it so that she put one on every horizontal. <laughs> the cows won't mind.
So this is the last post we're gonna do. It's the last one we got driven in. I actually had to put this one in like four different times. Take it out and put it in, because I kept hitting the root. But finally got it in a place. I, I couldn't get it perfectly straight up and down, so we're actually um, adjusting it with the wire of the fence, but it looks halfway straight now. But it's about three o'clock and we gotta get home. So this is gonna be the last one that we're gonna do, but we're halfway done. The posts are in and all the clips are on. All right, folks, as you saw in that last one that Deb was putting the clips on, that's about the halfway mark and we just ran out of time. So we got an hour long drive. So we're gonna go ahead and call it quits and put things away, but we are 100% done from just behind us all the way back to the corner where we started. So that's a good day. We thought we'd maybe get the post in and weren't sure on the clips. We have post and we're clipped up to this point. How do you think that would go today? And now that it's, the day is over, how do you think it went? I thought, I really thought we would get, get all of them driven, but it's just everything takes longer than you think it would. Even though when you're doing it, you feel like it's not taking that much time, but then you look and it's been an hour. But honestly, the fact that we're halfway done, we have a process now. We were, we were learning a few things along the way as well. So that's a time sucker, but we're halfway done. So we are almost completely done with this west side fencing after nine stories or episodes well it'll be t it'll be 10 by the time we're totally done yep. as yep. usual if you watch our channel we don't get as much done as we say we're going to get done in as the beginning we hope we will or, get done. or that we hope we'll get done but we work hard i mean it's not like we we're slacking i think we took a 15 minute lunch and Maybe. and ate ate a little bit of chow and and drank something real quick and then we were back to work so yep. But that's all we have for you today. Please stay tuned for uh, day 10 or fence build day 10 or part 10 or whatever we call it because there will be a part 10. But otherwise, that's all we've got. If you would, click that like button at the bottom. Subscribe if you haven't already and share with your friends. Otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Take care, y'all.